Thank you, Carlos, for your nice words. Uh, I'd like to thank also the organization for inviting me for this uh, keynote lecture. So, uh, the subject I selected for this uh, is uh, quite wide, but uh, I hope it is an interesting one for you. In fact, it's possible to optimize uh, large civil engineering projects taking into, into consideration the environment and still make them. Uh, all civil engineering, uh, what is said there as an introduction, everybody knows is just to, to uh, put the, the problems inside the frame. All civil engineering projects uh, have result uh, uh, environmental impacts, some positives have negatives. Engineering projects are essential to the economic and social development, and for some of them, their purpose is to pr protect people and goods from natural hazards, such as floods and landslides. In many, many of these uh, topics have been dealt with in this Congress. The media and environmental organizations tend to enhance the negative impacts of the projects and very seldom make reference to their positive impacts. They transmit to the people the concept that the construction of civil engineering projects such as dams, roads, bridges, railways, airports, underground works, waterways, maritime works, etc. The construction of all these works is bad for the environment, makes harm to the environment. In this context, high quality studies and design assume increasingly relevance for engineering projects to ensure viable technical and economic solutions with the, the least negative impacts. However, until more or less the early 80s, large engineering projects have only to be satisfactory from both technical and economical point of view. When alternative solutions have less interference with the environment, they were in general only selected by the owners, provided their construction cost would be the least. The role of geotechnics in the optimization of civil engineering project it is an important, as important as the efficient intervention of uh, its specialists and their decisions on the technical, economical, social, and environmental as well as operational aspects of the works and its special relevance where <coughs> there is a high degree of interference of those projects with the ground. The establishment of specific environmental legislation in the most developed regions to mandate that environment impact assessment are conducted for large engineering projects in order to determine the best design solution was essential to make compatible the construction of the works and the preservation of the environment. For example, in Europe, the European Commission <coughs> had a directive agreed in 1985, only in 1985, uh, and uh, that directive was soon transported for many countries, even outside the European Union. In my country, in Portugal, the first decree dates from 1990, five years later. This decree was updated in 2000, and the last version dates from 2013. Uh, I'd like to discuss this uh, subject. Uh, I will not be able to show many examples of everything, but I'll try to use my time the best way. But, and I will deal with this uh, problem related to construction materials, to hydraulic undertakings, to linear works, roads, railways, waterways. There is a big difference between these three types of linear works, mainly based on their gradient. We cannot accept gradients for, for example, waterways that have, are used, for example, for motorways. Say 6% sometimes for motorways, not more than that, 
but obviously we are far, very far away from a gradient of such, such a dimension for a waterway. Underground works, tunnels and caverns, bridges and viaducts, maritime works, and natural and excavated slopes. Uh, let us look at the construction materials. First of all, by saying that uh, the two first points, the two first uh, items there, relate to the use of these materials. We have to extract them from quarries and borrow areas, and then we use them in the uh, rocks and soils in the construction. The other, sec the three, the other, the other group of three, relates. It's just to name uh, a few developments in this uh, question of materials, is that uh, uh, we are using more and more materials which don't interfere so much with the environment by using recycled materials, quarry debris, and geosynthetics. The optimization of the use of geological construction materials is related to the selection of sites where the selection causes least impact, the reduction of the material volume with the optimization of the design solutions, uh, the compensation of volumes, excavation and fields considered in design and the management due construction, and uh, the rehabilitation of the areas of degraded by the extraction. I will touch briefly all of them, with the exception of the last one, I don't have time, it's a very interesting topic, it's a very new topic, a quite new topic, and it's mandatory that all quarrying and uh, all the types of activities like this, and not only quarrying, if you make a cavern and we take out of the ground, for example, one cubic meter of debris from, to, const to, to, to construct this cavern, uh, you have to uh, treat this debris properly uh, otherwise you will become with a huge degraded area with a, uh, which is very bad for the environment and uh, for the landscape. Let us come fast then and see that uh, uh, I will try to give some examples uh, concerning construction materials, uh, again with the aim of uh, uh, causing the least impacts in case of dams, I'll talk briefly and give some examples, linear works and land reclamation. I will not give uh, uh, visual examples for land reclamation, but I'll give you some information about this. So concerning dams, I will mention two cases which are uh, uh, interesting from my point of view and uh, go in favor of what I just said until now. We were, uh, we designed a, a dam, uh, a Crato dam in the Alentejo in the south of Portugal. This design was fish, finished in 78. And we designed an homogeneous earth dam. Uh, uh, the, 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 the body of the dam was mainly residual soil, granite, granitic residual soils, 56 meters high and a volume a little above 3.1 million cubic meters of soil. The borrow areas uh, were in the vicinity of the dam. You will see the dam is there, the borrow areas were here. But if you see, I'm sorry, but if you look at that, you will see that only this part and that part and that part of the borrow area was inside the reservoir. The reservoir is an area which is occupied in any case. And two-thirds of the remaining borrow area was outside the reservoir. As many, many other projects in my country, and in many countries, did not, was not constructed, and for many years, and in, uh, early, the 2000, early 2000, we were called to review this project and uh, because they were very interested in finishing. It was for water supply of a big town and so on. And we did, looked at the, uh, the, the project we have done, and based on these concerns on the environment and others, 
We decided to completely change the, 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 the IT is the same, the volume is a little smaller. We use the same residual soil just for the core, about half a million cubic meters, and the shoulders are ripped material from inside the reservoir down to five meters. The peas are quarries for the aggregates, for the concrete, and so on. And uh, with this, uh, we turn to have a, a much more uh, environmental friendly project, which unfortunately is not yet finished, uh, started. So which means that in, probably in five or ten years we'll be called to review this project and we'll still be, uh, we, we will still be, uh, to, it will be still possible to even improve the project from this point of view. Another project, it's in a small river, it's a big project, almost finished now. This is almost finished now, it's a concrete dam uh, in, this, uh, in the in, uh, in, uh, um, center of Portugal. It's a Ribeiro Rio concrete dam. It's a 70 meters high, it's 20, uh, 250 meters length, about 300 thousand cubic meters of uh, aggregates for the concrete. And uh, we did our best to find, and we succeeded in finding, uh, quarry uh, um, granite uh, uh, good enough to establish the two main quarries for the construction of this dam. Uh, although many are, this is a contact zone and many other areas, the, the granite was not in good conditions for being accepted as an aggregate material, but in these two cases, we studied them and uh, we have used them for, the, uh, for uh, extracting the granite for the aggregates. Again, we were able to put the, the source of materials inside the the, the reservoir, which was mandatory from this point of view. Now, when we talk about linear works, we have a lot of examples, but I'm going just to mention briefly uh, some. And, uh, 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 of course, we have, uh, in general, uh, excavations and embankments. And uh, one major, we have three, three main things which we have to take into consideration as very important. The first one is the volume compensation. What this means, means that if we have to excavate, that we have to excavate the amount of material which we have to use in the embankment. It means that we don't have to create deposits from one side if we have extra materials, or we have to go and to borrow areas and to, to quarries to, to pick up the remaining or the, the, the material which is lacking. So this question of volume, volume compensation is a very important one, mainly in these linear works. But don't forget that in all cases, you have to have into consideration the uh, bulking factor because if the material you are excavating is of good quality, granite, or limestone, whatever, you may easily have a bulking factor of say 1.5, 1.2, something like that, 1.25. This means that if you excavate 1 million cubic meters of rock that uh, you have available for well compacted embankments, 1.2 million. If you don't count with this factor, you end up with 200,000 more per million, which we have to locate somewhere, we have to find a deposit, and this costs a lot of money, creates a lot of environmental problems and landscape problems. This is a very interesting project, a motorway. Uh, this is a section of this motorway. You see, everything is there. You have, uh, you have uh, 40 meters, almost, almost 40 meters high excavations, you have almost 40, 40 meters or even more in some cases high embankments. You have a viaduct. You have uh, uh, two tunnels, two, two tube 
sorry, to tube tunnel, and all this next to an old arch dam, Verosa dam. So it is a very interesting uh, engineering design, and it also uh, very interesting from the points of view I just mentioned. Uh, another thing I'd like to say, apart from volume compensation and volume and the uh, bulking factor, is the question of materials management. This is very, very important during construction. This is very important and has to be taken into consideration to assure a good use of the materials. I give you the, the example. In this case, we had 400 millions in this piece here. We had 400, I'm sorry, 4 million cubic meters of materials, roughly excavated and embankment. And uh, this was only possible to balance because at one, at a certain moment, we said the tunnel has to be started immediately. Otherwise, if we finish and we balance with excavation and embankment of the line construction only, open construction, at the end, we have some half a million cubic meters of material coming from the tunnels, and we, have, we don't have any place to use them, and we have, again, to have a, a, a deposit to put this. So the management is also a very important one. It happens that this area is uh, even in the heart of the port wine vineyard area, which means that uh, every square meter costs a fortune, not only because it's, it's, uh, it, that's not only the problem of the environment, it's also the problem of the cost of the land, for example, to make a deposit. As, as, uh, this is a detail of the rock field, and I'd like to call your attention that also for this balance, we decided, we decided We decided to have the two platforms at different levels, three meters difference in level. We have a wall separating the two lanes, two by two, two by two, and this has reduced the volume and again made it compatible, made it compatible with the material available. The third example is a water, uh, it's a, a, a waterway. It's a 230 kilometers project we designed in Brazil. It comes from the big uh, Castanhão Dam, which is, uh, it uh, uh, impounds about 4.5 uh, uh, million cubic meters of water. And, uh, this water mostly for water supply, so irrigation in the Fortaleza area, which is 230 kilometers apart. And again, if you look there, this is a detail, but if you look to the main, you see, this is an area of big excavation and ice slopes. Look at these slopes, 15, 20 meters. But this goes down some more meters because it has to have the channel. And next to this excavation area, we have this embankment area. And again, these problems I just mentioned, I won't repeat, are very important and they have to be taken into consideration. Now, concerning land reclamation, I will not show any pictures to you, but I would like to mention that uh, uh, the problem is whether you should preferably use dredging instead of having borrowers and quarries. Interesting examples of different types are, for example, Singapore, that in the last uh, five years or six, seven years about, about one million cubic meters of the, of the uh, material has enlarged the size of Singapore city-state. For the Hong Kong airport, about 110 uh, million cubic meters has been used, mostly from uh, dredging. For Macau Airport, which is not far away, both in China, uh, for uh, expanding the residential area mainly, uh, it was uh, uh, used a lot of dredging, some quarrying, not so much quarrying, and some borrow areas, but mainly dredging as well. I'd like to finalize this topic by mentioning one beach, some beaches, 
you probably all know them, I don't know exactly, but one of them I'm sure all of you, at least by, from photos or, or movies know, which is Copacabana Beach. I, I participated in the study many years ago. And uh, the Copacabana Beach and the Calçavão, and all, everything you see there didn't exist uh, 40 years ago, 50 years ago. It was a very narrow strip. And this was uh, created by a, a landfill, uh, 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 hydraulic field uh, uh, coming from uh, dredging uh, in the bay nearby. And this is a way of uh, uh, acting in the, in the nature and acting uh, with, uh, without interfering much with the environment. This is the same situation in the Praia da Rocha in the south of Portugal. Just to give an idea of, all the, of the importance of the problem, in, 80, in 40 years, for 40, for oh years, the cliff went back 18 meters. And uh, the solution was again, to dredge and to bring this hydraulic field to the, to the sea. Now the sea is far away from the cliff and the, see the, the cliff evolution has completely stopped. And the same happened to another nice beach in the center of Portugal, uh, uh, beach of, uh, of uh, Figueira da Foz, where a, a very big strip of sand is there uh, uh, as a consequence of uh, uh, dredging. When we talk about dams, and uh, uh, now we are not talking about materials anymore for the moment, we are talking about dams, uh, we, uh, I mentioned two aspects. One is the environmental impact during construction, and the other is the environmental impact during operation. The second case is a case I have not worked. Is, uh, uh, I know the case very well. Uh, I even will show you a beautiful picture, picture which was sent recently to me by our Secretary General uh, uh, Fatshuan Vu. I, I uh, thank him again. But let us look at the first case. Uh, the first case is the Gargar Dam in Algeria. It's a very interesting dam. Uh, it's uh, uh, in a karstic area. It's uh, 90 meters high. Is very long. The volume is 4 million cubic meters. Uh, the reservoir capacity is very big as well. And the interesting thing here, and what I like to highlight, is that the spillway slope uh, the, uh, is, is 90 meters high. And uh, uh, we took advantage of the geological conditions of the rock mass, uh, karstic limestone. Uh, you can see there that under construction, this is a kind of a canite to help uh, protecting the, the limestone. And we were able to make a very steep, without using anything to support, and uh, the dam is constructed already more than 20 years. We look at this, we have, 90, 10, uh, we have berms every 10 meters, we have 90 meters high slope excavated during construction without any types of problems, without any types of support, because we have used the uh, structure of the limestone rock mass, almost horizontal, sound uh, limestone, and uh, this is a way of uh, not interfering too much with the environment by uh, doing this construction like that. As concerns uh, uh, the, the, the problem of the three gorges, all of you know the, pro the, the project. Uh, probably not some of you have already been there, at least the Chinese colleagues and many others. There are a lot of information there, but uh, the only thing I'd like to say is that, uh, because this topic I'm dealing with today, is that during floods, sp suspended sediments load is very heavy as a result of soil erosion in the catchment area. To reduce the sedimentation of the reservoir and to allow for the flow management, the dam includes 22 sluice gates and 
23 bottom outlets to allow sediments to be discharged during the flood season. But this is not enough. It's necessary to prevent the sediments to come to the reservoir. In this sense, our Chinese colleagues have made and started a comprehensive forestation program uh, to cover the, the area of the reservoir and the construction of sand dams, one big one, in one of the most active tributaries upstream of Three Gorges. This is an example, a big example, of how we can act in the large project like the Three Gorges project and uh, uh, in the sense of uh, uh, not interfering or interfering the least with the environment and having the uh, project uh, uh, produ pro producing energy, but much more than that. In small letters there, and I won't read it, is, for example, that before the dam was built, some years before, a big flood killed thousands of people uh, and uh, this was a very a problem which took, took to our colleagues in, in China a lot, and for the, the politicians in China a lot of problems, because it was a huge project. People didn't want the project to be built. Even the, some international financing was stopped, and they found their own sources to finalize, and today is what we can say a complete success. This is the picture of the dam today, the famous picture I, I received some two weeks ago or so. Very beautiful. The, scena the scenario is very beautiful and the dam is operating, as you see, decharging the water in a, 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 in a, a, a time where there is a, water, a, lot, a lot of water in the reservoir. Now, the linear works. Uh, when we are studying linear works, we have to look concerning the environmental problems as well. Alternative routes, those which interfere less with the environment. The problem of, vol of the volume compensation I just mentioned to you, not forgetting the bulking factor. The crossing to unstable areas, like uh, classic zones, soft soils, etc. And alternative solutions in some cases, in tunnel or open excavations. I'm going to give you some examples, which I hope you will like, enjoy. Uh, this is a section of the main motorway in Portugal, Lisbon or Porto, with a section about 100 kilometers from Lisbon and very close to Fatima. You probably, all of you have heard about Fatima. And this is a 22 kilometer section uh, which cuts a, a limestone, karstic limestone area, which is uh, uh, very well known because it is a touristic uh, region where large caves for touristic purposes exist, very large, when I mean large caves, I'm talking about dozens of meters of, uh, of uh, diameter and things like that. So we have to s study alternative uh, solutions for the, uh, for the uh, alignment of the, the road, what it, we did the best we could, trying to avoid very big caverns, which would imp uh, imply to leave the project aside and to try to another one. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, one of the problems it has to be faced. And this is not related with karstic for the moment. I'll come back to the karstic problem. This is one of the two big uh, 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 hills and we have used for that, uh, this is degraded is 6%, it's very high for a motorway as you know, but to reduce the excavation in case of this would be the solution. So we studied a solution in open excavation in red and we studied another alternative solution for the same section in tunnel uh, 10 meters below the other, and uh, we compared both. The phreatic level is very low, no problems with phreatic level because it's a karstic uh, area, and so the, uh, it's very low, the phreatic level. And so we went to the concessionaire and said, okay, here it is a solution. This will create us a problem because we have, first of all, an environmental problem from the point of view of uh, uh, 
of um, uh, missing the word, uh, uh, looking at it. Uh, and the other thing is that we have a huge amount of, amount, uh, of material that we have to find a way of using it uh, online, uh, not far from there. The, the alternative which doesn't pose this kind of problems is this one, in which you have 10 meters below a double, tub, a double tube tunnel uh, and uh, we will we'll not create problems. The structure again, some horizontal layers of hard limestone, although some might be a little karstic, but uh, no problem from this point of view. And the question of from the concessionaire, well, what is the cost? This was, this was immediately below the laws I mentioned before entered into operation. What is the cost of this solution and the cost of this one? And we said, well, the cost of this solution is one third of the cost of that solution. And so the concessionaire said that the reply is very simple. You will go to an open excavation, and that was a solution which really was considered. And here it is, a section of this uh, uh, solution, the 30 meters high excavation. And with this excavation in just this section, we got 2 million cubic meters of limestone, hard limestone, nice blocks of limestone, so we have to do the, the design considering the possibility of using in embankments, rock fill embankments, the same 2, 000, 2 million cubic meters, but with a factor of 1.2, which means we have available for good compaction, we made trial embankments, uh, 2.4 million cubic meters. That's what we did. and. Uh, uh, one way of solving or helping the problem, we have uh, embankments after this adjustment from 12 to 23 meters, I'm sorry, from 12 to 23 meters in, in, in high. And so, it's not that one, um, it's not that one, uh, it's this one. And uh, for this material well compacted, the slopes, these slopes would be stable to a, with, like, uh, uh, with an inclination of one per one. Per one. one to one would be enough for assuring the stabilization of the slopes. The problem is that we have to find a way of putting the material. And if you look there, the expropriation done was from there to there. So we thought, okay, one good idea would be then to use part of this material at least to expand the, the, the embankment and to have the embankment with a, 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 the slope inclination of one to one and a half would be a soil slope, but anyway, without cost because that, that uh, uh, area had been already expropriated, we have used this and finally the slopes of these embankments became as I show in this uh, picture. And the interesting thing is that the same concessionaire, some two or three years, four years later, meanwhile, this project became a natural park, this area, and the environmental laws came into operation, came into, into uh, service. Uh, the same concessionaire, and we were designing the we got what the CREL, CREL means uh, 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 regional road, external regional motorway in Lisbon. Uh, we were designing a, a, a cut and cut, a, a open excavation section because we had something like 12 meters this side, excavation 16 that side, and this was, as it is shown here, open excavation in both sides. So we designed open excavation is a 285 meters long tunnel uh, section. And when the contractor was already there, started excavating the material from up, up, down as usual, he found in this area dinosaur footprint. And when he found this phono dinosaur's footprint, everything stopped immediately because at that time people was very much already 
uh, concerned with the environment, and environment means speleological problems, archaeological problems, and many other things. It's a huge world, world which covers a lot of things. So it stopped immediately, and the problem was what to do. So many absurd solutions came to the mind of the people. I'm not going to spend time by telling them to you. But finally, it was decided to make two regular tunnels, drilling and, uh, and blasting method, uh, huge tunnels. This is, I'm sorry, this is the, this is the section of each tube and the length, as I said. And the problem is that in this area, in this part, we only had two meters of a burden. It was a very difficult, it was the most difficult that I have worked with, and the contractor was fantastic, and we had a lot of concern to be able to do this tunnel without creating problems. It, it didn't create, we didn't create any problem at all, and it was, it was finalized like this. But it has been finished. Here it is how it looks. This is the head of the dinosaur, and this is the tail of the dinosaur. And the question is, he didn't ask us what, how much would be the cost of one solution compared with the other solution, because he has faced with a position of doing a tunnel there, but I tell you that this, for this 285 meters, that the solution in tunnel costed 10 times more than the solution open excavation as we had anticipated if it would be, and it would be constructed if the dinosaurs would not be there. Coming back to the same uh, section I mentioned of the main highway, Karstic limestone. Uh, at that time, when construction started, again we were in the beginning of the application of, of, the, of, the, uh, of the, 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 the laws which had been made concerning the environment. And uh, a speleologist was a part of the team which was uh, supervising the, the works. So. Uh, we hoped not to have a big, a big uh, caverns, uh, but we knew that we would find some. And then, to be short, apart from smaller caverns that the contractor, mainly in the evening or late afternoon, would be, very, would be, uh, would be able to very easily close, uh, they, were, they were found 11 important holes caverns, uh, eight doorline type, like this one, and three with much bigger caves uh, inside. So we were requested to solve this problem. And it was possible with a simple engineering solutions again to solve the problem, a huge problem, environmental problem. For the eight, like this, what we did, just we had a pre-slab there, uh, erobed by concrete, then a piece of uh, uh, a section of, of uh, 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 rock field, and the motorway there. So it's there, it's 50 meters almost, this one. This is a real size. This is almost uh, 50 meters down. It's there. In 200 years or 300 years, if someone wants to go there and to see how it looks like, that's very easy just to remove the motorway and see. For the other three, because they had some uh, rooms with some uh, uh, five, six, seven meters wide, then we were imposed or we, were, we had to leave a, 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 a free visit now, anytime, with light and so on. So we had a, a uh, concrete structure, stairs, someone, anyone can go there, and the motorway is there again without any harm to this uh, problem. So this is, these are examples of, um, 
of uh, uh, situations in which we still can make the motorways in good conditions for the main purpose of the, the, the construction, which is the traffic, as well as to prevent problems or some problems in the environment. This is back the situation I showed you before, uh, the case of uh, the port wine region and those nice uh, section I showed you with uh, excavations 40 meters and embankments and the uh, tunnel and uh, the dam, etc. And uh, this is uh, to call you the attention for the fact of expropriation and the cost of this. We decided, this is far away, we decided three things. As I told you, we reduced this uh, embankment, is mainly rock fill, with this wall three meters, and the two lanes are at the different levels exactly to manage this material. The other thing is at the top, we had two alternatives. Either we would follow the normal excavation until there, until there, or we would make a small curtain anchored as we did. And why is this solution much better from many points of view? It's because like this we saved 15 meters, meters section all along the road which, as I said, in this situation, it was, it was a, a very expensive and also interfering much more with the environment than the, other, the solution which has really been uh, constructed. So, uh, the last example is uh, 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 we were called for a consulting business for the Agnatia uh, motorway in northern Greece. It's a long, some hundred kilometers long uh, um, motor, uh, highway. And uh, when we were called, the situation was like this. There was a tunnel built, constructed 3,500 meters more or less, already constructed until here another tunnel constructed from the other side to about 300 meters and there was this alternative which was with tunnel and viaduct and embankment in this area. This area, this area uh, is formed of a, the, uh, is, this is a huge landslide and also here some movements there, some 20-25 meters deep well studied, there were a lot of information there. And so we uh, studied alternative solutions for the, for the problem. And instead of uh, connecting this point to that point uh, with this alignment, we studied one alternative which had to be to the other side of the river and far longer and with problems as well. And finally, we propose to connect this point of the tunnel here with this one with another tunnel with this orientation this, uh, because with such a tunnel, we cross that area below the, lands, the, below the, 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 the landslide. So I, I know that from, from uh, from uh, Paul Marinos that the construction was done like this. It has been finished without any kind of problems and that the, the, the highway is uh, under operation, regular operation now. Okay, uh, almost some uh, simple examples to go to another topic, natural and excavated slopes. Geological risks resulting from the instability of natural slopes, this has been very much dealt in this Congress, soil and rock masses, often affect people and property in populated areas. Natural and excavated slopes require stability analysis, having into consideration geological, hydrogeological, and geotechnical conditions of the ground, ensuring that supporting works when necessary have a minimum interference with the environment and landscape. 
There are three examples. I'm going to be fast, as fast as possible. This is a very interesting one in a national park in Portugal, some 40 kilometers south of Lisbon, which we the, this road, this road there, is, is the only road to a beach, an ice beach there, behind the, that uh, rock mass, and uh, it blocks fall down, and for two years the road was stopped, no, the, it was blocked, and uh, once we were told, okay, please study the stability of this rock mass, but you cannot do anything to the rock mass. You cannot excavate anything, you cannot make uh, uh, walls, whatever. This rock mass, more than 100 meters high, have to stay as it is. Now study uh, solutions for that. So, uh, we, this is main, the, 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 all the rock mass is limestone, uh, not karstic limestone, very interesting uh, uh, rock mass. And uh, uh, we studied some alternatives, and finally, uh, we, this is a summary of our alternatives. The really, we didn't touch, in sense of excavate or whatever, the surface of the, of the uh, uh, slope, natural slope. Uh, and to protect the road, we constructed a false tunnel. We'll so show you right away better. And then what we did, we, had mesh, we used meshes and barriers, elastic uh, uh, dynamic barriers also, to help, to help solving the problem. This is an example of some works being done 100 meters above the road. Look at the skill which is necessary to achieve such uh, work, just the uh, people working in these conditions. And uh, here, some examples of the, the, the dynamic barriers and the, the wire mesh, this one being anchored somewhere there. Uh, there, the dynamic barriers at the lower level, a supporting wall with the same limestone to be as much as possible integrated in the, in the landscape, uh, and the, the false tunnel there, and a, a general view so you see, it's not possible to do anything else because if you look now at the, the complex, this is one hundred, more than, I'm sorry, this is, this is about 150 to 200 meters there. And so it's impossible to do something else rather than what you proposed. And also the best solution to avoid a block to come and kill people or whatever, it was really to create this false tunnel. Then, uh, go back to the years uh, 60 in Oporto. This is the Don Luis Bridge. And in Gaia, left river of the River Douro, left the bank of the River Douro, there were a lot of blocks following, falling. And uh, on top, I'll show you better later on in the next slide, there, is a, uh, there was a, a, a monument there from the 16th century and below, below, immediately below there, oh, let us, let, let us look at it here after the works were finalized. Again, we could not do anything else but to study well the structure of the rock mass, the granitic rock mass. And this is the, the, the monastery, which is from the 16th century. And here is the chapel, a chapel from the 19th century. And here is a, a way where people used to walk to go to, the, to, the, to, to work and so on. And this is a photo I took uh, immediately after the works have been finished in 65, 64. Uh, looking to that, it seems that, uh, well, it will be always, for, the, for, for, for all the life of the, of the slope, it will be always uh, something ugly there. Uh, but in fact, I took recently, this was taken three weeks ago, this photo, and this is the area which has been treated, and as you can see, the patina uh, was uh, uh, responsible for giving back the same uh, scenario that we had before. Here we have again the chapel, here we have again the monastery. It's completely stabilized, and the stabilization was mainly uh, um, uh, due to, in this part, in this half part, big blocks, 
the blocks themselves were uh, um, were bolted and and uh, and um, uh, missing the word anyway. Let us say bolting and anchored to the rock mass inside, and they were themselves a kind of support for the uh, surrounding blocks. In the upper second part of this part, second part, the rock mass is much more fractured, so some beams have been, small beams have been built there, and they were also bolted and anchored to the, inter to the inside of the box. So the, the aspect is like this. You don't, you, we didn't change much apart from the color because we have the deforestation. We have to make the deforestation and f falling, down, falling down, letting fall down the blocks which were already apart from the rock mass. And uh, finally, we have today this atmosphere, this, uh, this uh, uh, site, uh, everything integrated, and we keep safe the monastery and the church. Finally, finally, the same situation exactly from the other side of the river. We were, what I showed you is in this side, you don't, we don't see it now. In that side of the river, Oporto, in the town of Oporto, the same thing, the same type of treatment. I won't go further because I don't have time. So again, we have a, 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 a scar there, but in say five, three, four, five years, we'll have exactly the same that uh, we will see today in the other side. To finalize in the last, the last slide, uh, it's an interesting example of uh, another uh, motorway near Lis of, uh, around Lisbon, and uh, this is uh, again a, a 100 meters high slope, natural slope. It had to, to be cut in order to install the motorway, but we would like to have a treatment to the excavation which would not interfere much with the, with the, the scenario of the area. So we have a, a plan and then it has been constructed. These are not uh, supporting walls. They are walls which just keep the, the materials at the surface uh, in sound conditions. There are drainage and so on. And so uh, 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 we uh, succeed in doing this by short greeting some areas and mainly by the use of a precast grid with uh, plants inside and this uh, uh, looked uh, very nice uh, and still is looking very nice today. As conclusion, the rapid growth in the world's population which uh, everybody knows has increased uh, for about four times in the 20th century and its concentration in urban areas, about 50% of the people living in the world today live in areas, in uh, cities, and many in mega cities. Mega cities uh, generally is more than 10 million people. From one side, the need for construction of new civil engineering projects as well as, well as for the rehabilitation of some of the already existing in order to create adequate conditions for the economic and social development aspired to, such as energy generation, transportation, irrigation, water supply and sanitation, with a mind to environmental preservation, imply, and that is the main conclusion, imply the optimization of the corresponding projects, which, as shown in the previous examples, requires qualified engineering geologists and geotechnical engineers to use their knowledge to look for the best possible solutions for these engineering works. Thank you very much for your attention.